And here we go with the intro. You're listening to eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. Hello and welcome to eLearn Chat, our new podcast featuring prominent leaders, shakers and movers in the e-learning and training industry. Hi everyone, welcome to eLearn Chat. Here we are, it is Wednesday, February 22nd, and we've got a special guest today, someone who's a lot of fun, someone who I know personally and really enjoy being with. But before that, let me introduce you to our co-host, Jean. Hey, Jean Franzblau, how are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. A little tired, a little sleepy, but good. Really yeah, good. I know how Thank that you. feels. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, this is going to be Jean's last show. She has a lot of work commitments, and the early mornings don't work out for her. Yes, I was just announcing it in the chat room as well. So I want to thank everybody for warmly welcoming me. And I think you'll be meeting other another co-host sometime soon. Yeah, we're going to have uh, Colleen uh, T. Sun Lee. She's going to be joining us, I guess, next week. Originally, you were going to do next week, but you've got scheduling conflicts. So Yes, but I hope, you know, if it works out for me to come back for Anthony, okay. uh, that would be fantastic. He's that, such a good guy, and it'll be wonderful to be able to um, bring him on board for an interview. That sounds great. Okay, that'll be next month. Sounds good. And Jean, I know everybody appreciates and thanks you for doing this for the last almost two months. Yes, so, thank you. That was fun. And we got to, it was almost like a nice celebration. We got to hang out in person this weekend. So thank you for that. <clears throat> that was fun. And yes. a beautiful day. You know, that's one thing about living in the uh, Southern California area. On, in the middle of winter, we can go out to the marina, have some sun, get a nice breeze. Life is good. <laughs> so nice. It was no really nice. No earthquakes. You know, it was good for the, for the day. Anyway, well, well, Gene, today we've got, well, you know him. You just met him a couple minutes ago. I've known Alan for several years. I think we're going to have a good morning. With us today is Dr. Alan Partridge. <laughs> that was Dr. Alan Partridge. I'm sorry. I, I applauded over ourselves. <laughs> hey, Alan, how are you? Hey, Rick. Hey, Gene. Good to see you both. Uh, I'm doing very well. Yeah, it's a bright and sunny day here in Pennsylvania. So uh, it's always a good day when we have beautiful weather uh, still in the in the uh, winter time here in, in PA. So What's the temperature? Uh, I haven't been outside yet, but I think it's probably around 40. Um, oh. I know it's not freezing, so it's got to be somewhere in the 40s, which is actually, we've had the mildest winter that I can recall at all. That's it's just been said. incredibly good. good. That's good. Now, Alan is, for those who don't know him, he is uh, he is the e-learning evangelist uh, for Adobe. He works with the Adobe Captivate team. I know in the past you've worked with the director team. I think you were the evangelist for that team. And he does all sorts of work. Uh, he's also, I think you're still a professor at uh, Penn State. <laughs> At, at uh, Indiana University Indiana of Pennsylvania. Indiana University of Pennsylvania, sorry. Yep. Yes. He's I teach uh, uh, doctoral courses there in, uh, uh, in uh, e-learning, basically, e-learning fields, and things related to uh, interactive simulation. So I have, as you mentioned, I used to work with the Shockwave and Director team. So I have a, a pretty strong background in uh, games, uh, game design, and then leading into simulations and simulation design, uh, and uh, all of that kind of bridged into academic work that I was doing with uh, e-learning and online learning and uh, and all I, I like to think it all congealed into the role that I do uh, as an e-learning evangelist because it's it, it all kind of fits together in an impossibly uh, nice little little uh, collection of of skills and if you've been at any of the trade shows recently like ASTD technology or devlearn uh, learning solutions all those shows you'll see Alan probably working in the booth and also giving talks at there and he, he gives a very fun talk so if you if you have a chance go see him he's fun he's very informative and he will he'll make you smile he may even be wearing a shirt and tie though that's rare <laughs> very now, rare what happened today what did this this tie thing what gives hey well i knew i was going to be on camera i wanted to look good for the ladies <laughs> okay there you, you know. go <laughs> you're straight it's all straight <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, Alan, all sorts of good things are happening. And in fact, today we are going to announce the winner of the HTML5 contest for Adobe Captivate. Yes, exactly. Okay, we'll do that uh, towards the end of the show. Uh, absolutely. Uh, that we've been having an ongoing HTML5 uh, 
competition since releasing the uh, HTML5 converter. So, you know, we've known for a while that HTML5 is, is the trending technology and that mobile is what it's all about. And, and, and uh, looking forward, it's going to be really important to have a mobile solution in the e-learning space. And to have that mobile solution, you really have to have uh, an, an Apple iOS solution. And because that gets you into this HTML5 space, you've got to have something tangible there. Uh, so we really feel strongly that that's going to be kind of a new core requirement that you're going to have to expect your, your uh, e-learning tools to be able to export not only to Flash, but also now to HTML5. Uh, we see that that continued growth is happening in the PC and the laptop kind of market, but it's happening at, at basically the same pace that it was happening before. Um, so you've got growth. You don't have decline like some people expected, but the tablets are coming in, and those are actually climbing at a faster rate mm -hmm. than we saw in in the uh, uh, in the PC market, right? So you're going to continue to see where tablets are actually proliferating faster than laptops and and desktops. But a lot of people thought initially, oh, that means that tablets going to replace your desktop. It doesn't look like that's what's going to happen. It looks like there'll be two devices. Um, but needless to say, you still have the new requirement of, okay, now how do I get my content easily from place to place? So Adobe's philosophy on this is really pretty simple. Is It's the same as it's been for ages, which is we don't want people to have to produce their content over and over and over again. We want to create tools that make it so that you produce your content once, and then you just publish it in ways that are readable on various different kinds of devices. So Good HTML5 name. in that sense is more of a, you know, this should be a simple matter of I publish it, and it publishes out in such a way that if the device that's playing it back is better off using Flash, it uses Flash. And if the device that plays it back is better off using HTML5, it uses HTML5. So part of that core story then is, uh, getting the content as quickly as possible out there. So Adobe was really the first on the scene with an HTML5 editor in Dreamweaver, and we, re we released that with uh, the e-learning suite already. Uh, but we're continuing to improve those technologies and go further. Uh, and, of course, we had the app packagers uh, all the way back with CS5 that were included with e-learning suite and with Flash, um, and the ability to get your content out as an app for an iOS device. But here's the, the glitch, right? The e-learning space is not really full of hardcore multimedia developers for the most part that are, that are you know, anxious to go out and, and produce these sort of apps that are highly technical and have kind of requirements and bits and pieces. So Adobe's been doing a bunch of things in the HTML5 space to kind of find ways to make that how do I get an app or how do I get an application running on an iOS device without all the technicality and the developer licenses and all that kind of stuff couple of things we've done. We bought a company called Natobi. I don't know. Are you familiar with Natobi at all? Mm -mm, I'm not. No, not by name. Okay. So Natobi is a company that produces a, a technology called PhoneGap. Uh, and if you get a chance, take a look at some of the information out there about Natobi and PhoneGap. Basically what this is is if you want to take your HTML5 content, and it, I should explain to everybody, HTML5, it sounds all technical. It mm -hmm. means web page. Right, so HTML5 just means a new version of web pages, right? Oh, and what's can you, can new you spell about it? Natobi yeah, go well? ahead. What's that, Gene? Can you spell Natobi? Sure, Natobi. It's N-I-T-O-B-I. Okay, thank you. And the technology is called Phone Gap. So just phone and then gap. No, I've heard okay. of Phone Gap. I just didn't relate it to Natobi. Exactly. Thank so. You. Uh, the uh, the HTML5 stuff uh, through Natobi PhoneGap, you can actually take that uh, HTML5 piece and you can load it up into the PhoneGap, and PhoneGap will convert it into an app for iOS. It'll convert it into an app for Android. It'll convert it into a BlackBerry app, and it'll convert it into a WebOS app. All at the same time, all from the same interface, all online, uh, and there's actually an online interface to do all that for free. So uh, that's one angle we're coming at it, right? But with Captivate, we wanted to actually look at it and say, okay, well, Captivate is pretty cool because we know what all the things are in there in Flash that need to be converted. So we actually built this converter and put it up on labs.adobe.com. So if people want to get to that, it's just labs.adobe.com. And I think I, I, I just dropped a link in, in the Skype for you guys. Um, 
it, labs.adobe.com is where you can get now both the uh, HTML5 converter or you can also get a new uh, piece that I hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about later that's called Course Companion, uh, both of which are now available through the labs. And then what we're doing is we're currently rolling that technology in to uh, obviously into the, the product so that it becomes you know a part of the, the normal published pipeline. In fact, uh, if you want to see, I actually have uh, an iPad over here running some content. I'd be uh, happy to show you a little bit. Oh, oh good. Sure. Show us some stuff. Okay. Let's have a look. I'm going to turn just a little bit over here. Hopefully you guys can see. You'll have to tell me if I've got my cameras all lined up properly. This is a man who's prepared. I know. I love this. And the answer is... Okay. Are you able to see the iPad okay? Yes. Yeah, perfectly. Excellent. Okay. So here we have a, an iPad. And those who are familiar with the HTML5 converter know that the HTML5 con uh, converter that they've seen and have been using, in fact, for the competition, uh, only converts certain kinds of things. But I wanted to show you this piece because it'll give you a little sneak at what's happening back behind the scenes at the labs. Hmm. Neat. Not so able to if, hear it. If you're familiar at all with uh, with what's been happening with the um, uh, with the um, uh, uh, Captivate scene, you know that this is actually one of the demos that we produced for Captivate, and it includes a variety of different things. So it includes some audio, it includes a little bit of uh, graphics, it also includes some animation, uh, it includes interactive buttons. assuming I can press them. Uh, it includes some motion animation. It includes some uh, slightly more advanced things. So it actually includes some elements that are like um, action script based and able to do those pieces with action script. And you can hear it a bit, I, I suspect, but it's probably a low volume. Yeah. You can see that the, hopefully you can see that the animation is coming in just as it would uh, in the primary piece. You can it see here great. we've got a little button here that takes us to the the demo mode kind of piece and we've still got interactivity and those kinds of things happening if I want to jump around the demo I can actually click to a different section of the demo and go to that different different section of the demo um, the contents all there it's all online it's coming through dynamically I can navigate back to the menu this is one of my favorite ones so uh, you know how when you're doing a demo and you've got like a try it uh, you want to be able to actually do the interactions. So if I go to the Try It section, I can actually go into that Try It section, and he'll give me my instructions, what I should do. I'm just going to skip ahead. And then once I skip ahead, he gives me the instructions, you know, that I should actually go through the process of doing this interaction. So if I click on Select up there above, I can actually select all. Uh, and then once I've selected all the information, then I'm free to move on and do the edit. I know I want to edit this particular piece. And in the edit menu, I want to choose transform. Let's see here. It's fussing at me. Oops, free transform. There it is. And then if I look up here in the top, I can actually type in this little top field. I can type the degree angle. Oh. So we're starting to see all of that technology that we've previously come to expect is now present. We're able mm -hmm. to move around the screen, glide around, do things, navigate the menu move back and forth. We're really starting to see all of the things that you kind of come to expect. So hopefully folks who've seen, you know, a little bit of the HTML5 so far will uh, have a chance to kind of get excited about what's new there and what's happening there in that space. And that's all Captivate, what we were just looking at. Yeah, that's all Captivate. Yeah. In fact, here is a website. This is where you can take a look at all sorts of Adobe demos for Captivate. So I'm showing that right now. The website is listed on the bottom there. Wow. So definitely go take a look at that site. In fact, that's, I think, one of the demos that he was just showing. You see part of the graphic there for that. 
Yeah, exactly, so. Rick. The the um the the top demo is there, and the nice thing about this is we've actually been able to put those demos up as Captivate source files. Mm -hmm. So you can download the Captivate file uh, and put it on your machine, and then open up and see how it's done. And there's uh you know the top one there is an application capture demo. But then after that, there's a video demo that has lots of examples of using video interactively uh, inside of your projects. And then below that one, there's one uh, that is a um, choose-your-own-path kind of a, an e-learning example. So it actually lets you jump around between the informational section and the assessment section and back and forth. So if you've ever wondered, how do I do that, you can download that sample and use it as a model, a prototype, to build your own content. Uh, and then same thing, the last one there is for a simulation. So a, like a soft skill simulation or a scenario-based training, it actually shows you the logic, shows you the action script, shows you uh, how the uh, elements are represented on screen and everything. So it's a great resource. I love this page. Um, and I, I think we're, we're sharing the link to that page as we well, are, Rick. We are. It's on the bottom of the uh, page. Excellent, excellent. So I think, yeah, people will probably enjoy uh, going there and downloading it. And also, if you go to the Captivate blog, there's a giant label on every page that says download sample files, and that's where you can find these sample and files. And here is the Captivate blog. Here's the, also the web address for it. Easy to get to. Yes, Lee, have already put it in the chat room. Is it blogs.adobe.com slash Captivate? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we, Lee, have already, already had it in there, and Dawn... Sighed. She sighed uh, wistfully. Wish I was still designing and had Adobe products to use. <laughs> oh, okay. She misses the day, no doubt. She well, does. But, but there is another she thing does. you can do, Don, and that is you can go to the Facebook page for um, oh. Adobe Captivate. And here <laughs> it is. Would you would be one of over 20,000 people that have liked it and joined it. So this is a very popular page right now. Yeah, we absolutely are having a great time with this. This is, you know, it's been a grand experiment for us. We sort of said, you know, we wanted to know, could we use a Facebook stream mm -hmm. to actually capture the, the sort of constant river of, um, of media and, and do a good job at providing a resource for people in the space that people are. So we know that a lot of people are on Facebook, really a huge number of people on Facebook, and we really wanted to... Um, see, well, what can we do with a Facebook page? Can it go further? And we've done some pretty spectacular things now. So one of the things we did is we just had this HTML5 contest. And if people participated in this, they actually uploaded their own content to the Facebook page. Yeah. Um, they can also go there and post on the Facebook page. So let's say, uh, in fact, I was just talking to uh, one of the resource providers who makes uh, e-learning um, imagery. So they make assets, they make uh, images, pictures, you know, backgrounds, that kind of thing. And I said to them the same thing I've been saying to all of them, which is, you know, when you come out with a new pack, that's news in our community. To people in our community, we want to know there's a new, you know, a new batch of avatars or a new batch of backgrounds or that sort of thing. So come to the Facebook page for Captivate and, and drop a link in there so that people know, you know. And we try to follow that as well. We follow the uh, aggregate streams, the RSS streams of virtually every e-learning blog that we can find. We pull things out of the Twitterverse, and we put it all in there. So that stream is actually incredibly active. It's been growing from, you know, a couple, three posts a day up to 10, 15 posts a day. I, I actually believe that that's going to become... You remember, Rick, the old... You were a part of the old director community, yeah? A little bit. I wasn't that involved with it, but I did do director. This is about 15 years ago, 14 years ago. Well, it's been some a while. People, some people remember uh, Director Web, mm -hmm. which was uh, Alan Levine, right? He he ran Director Web, yeah. didn't he? And so um, uh, uh, Alan ran Director Web, and that thing, if, if, if you would go several times a day because it was constant. The stream of people posting examples of their work, uh, the stream of people you know, saying this is going on in the community or here's a new tutorial or that kind of thing. So that's really where I see this Facebook page headed yeah. is to this kind of constant stream. When uh, Lily Berry puts out a new article, you know, I try to make sure that that thing goes in there immediately. Same thing you know, if it's a new widget or a new, you know, anything that's happening out there, including uh, things that are happening in a broader e-learning context. You know, if somebody's written a new article that's important for uh, e-learning creators, I try to get that content into the stream as quickly as possible. In, and in then fact, we're probably going to have this show on the stream pretty soon. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure that it will just keep 
uh, flopping right into the stream and keep going. Yeah, that's I, a, a part I'll, of the, I'll post the piece. It. As soon as our show is done, I'll we'll render it out and we'll post it out probably within an hour. That Jeff would be absolutely question. perfect. Jeff has a question. He says, "Is that that inter Alan? Then interaction is that available on the current converter, or is that to come?" It's it's to come. It's a sneak. I have okay. just sneaked. So okay. uh, the. Some of the basic interaction that you saw is in the current converter. So and so some of the winners that you can see through the Facebook page. So if you go to the Facebook page and click on HTML5 contest, mm -hmm. you can still see all of the entries. Um, and you can see that some of that interaction is there, some of the animation. But the stuff that I showed you in the sneak today is actually a little bit beyond. It's a little faster, a little smoother. You know, everything's playing a little better. But that's that's how these things go, right? And that's part of putting this into a pre-release cycle. Uh, in a public beta is showing people and then getting their feedback and then the engineering team can just keep rolling faster and faster and getting more features but also improving and making everything work faster and smoother so that's um, uh, the piece that we just looked at as an example is actually uh, a sneak of output from uh, the latest builds internally yeah, which looks uh, really good. but cool. the online build does have it has most of the basic interaction that we saw it doesn't have uh, I don't think it has the text entry boxes, and uh, so there are some bits and pieces that you won't find in the current build. So that is. Well, it's another reason to check out the Facebook page is to see what's coming. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's truly we valuable. do we do leak bits and pieces on the Facebook page uh, now and again too. Um, yeah. The uh, yeah, as Leva says, her current projects have too much advanced actions to convert. So I, oh, I think. Oh, you're reading the stream. <laughs> I thought you were psychic. <laughs> yeah, I can see the stream. I can see it all. You know, I got it all going on. I will no um, longer announce them for you. <laughs> okay. <Jeez. laughs> okay. Now another Keep resource, going. another resource that's out there is the Adobe Captivate uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, absolutely. Or the Adobe e-learning this... e YouTube YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they. Well, we've got a couple of things going on out there. We've got an a, a, a um, an Adobe e-learning channel on YouTube. We've also got uh, tv.adobe.com, uh, which has an e-learning channel as well. So uh, the Adobe e-learning channel on YouTube is nice because it aggregates content from all of the um, Captivate-related or e-learning-related or uh, Adobe e-learning-related kinds of tutorials and things that are out there in the world. So we bring those all together. Uh, we've got several evangelists now, myself and Vish and Pooja. When we post videos, we put them up there. We also try to bring in videos like I know that mo Rick most of your videos are in the collections here right. on okay. this as well Great. Uh, we try to just link to every video that we can find because it, it gets a huge number of hits I think that more and more people are you know we we all say Google it but a lot of times today I think people if they want YouTube a tutorial it. they YouTube it you know YouTube they really it. do and they they just want to know you know how do I do this thing they'll type in the keywords and then they, they, their first preference would be if it comes up on YouTube. I'm curious, um, you, you mentioned you're getting a lot of traffic on YouTube. What is your traffic looking like? Uh, I haven't looked at it lately, but oh, it's, okay. uh, I think it was over 50,000 the last time I looked, and it's only about a year old. Wow. Um, so it grows really, really fast. Uh, it's a really uh, kind of a, a big... Um, it, it does. Uh, I mean, we've been doing the uh, Adobe Captivate channel on YouTube for about... About a year and a half, we've got over 200, I think close to 200,000 views. So a lot of people look at this stuff, and it's amazing. People do look for resources, and like you said, YouTube is probably one of the first places they go. Mm -hmm. um, we do YouTube, we do Vimeo. They, they work out really well, and um, we get lots of comments saying, this is great, we want more. Of course, it's not always easy to do more when you're working a lot, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's a great resource place. And definitely go to these websites because you'll... You'll get your money's worth, which is free, but you actually get something for free. Yeah. Yeah, that's how apparently that's how Jeff first found you, Alan, was was on YouTube. Oh yeah? Okay. It works. Yeah, you, you made it a, a captivate hint. And that's how we found you. <laughs> well, I get mixed reviews for my YouTube oh. videos because uh I can be a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> so my bad, it was Rick. Sorry, my bad. I, I misunderstood Jeff. It was Rick uh that Alan it was oh, Rick okay. You, <laughs> you must have been confused by my comment. See, but indirectly, you found Alan through me, so it works. Excellent. Yeah. Well, all that networking really works, it and does. that's um, it does. 
you know, one of the things we found as we started to work with Facebook, we, we've been trying to, to figure out how to work with the stream, how to, you know, because the, one of the things I said in this week's blog article actually was um, that I'm not sure that it's a web anymore. I think that, that with all the social networking, it may be that it's more a stream than a web. Hmm. And so now that it's a stream, how do we contend with that? How do we, how do we process all that information and get, and search it and find it and get access to it? And so uh, I think one of the links I might have sent you, Rick, is for a service called Memo Lane. Did I send you that? No, not that one. Oh, okay. So um, I'll, I'll send you a link here in the thing. But uh, Memo Lane is really pretty interesting. And I've, I've put together a resource for folks in the e-learning community uh, in, the, uh, in the Memo Lane space. And this is basically a rapid e-learning aggregate stream. That's not, the that game, that's not gamification, right? No, 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 no. no the okay, gamification is one. actually uh, this afternoon I'm talking with Carl Kopp uh, okay. about gamification uh, in just, uh, oh, that's well, it'll be this morning for you. It's just in another uh, 30 minutes, no, hour and 30 minutes, yeah. yeah. Um, this one, Memo Lane is a new service that actually allows you to look at a historical timeline of social networking inputs. So do you ever like think, okay, well, I wish I could just search the tweets, the blogs, the Facebook posts, all in one place. Right. Um, and see them in the context of time, but also search for the topic that I want. That's what this is. So uh, I, as a, uh, a user, put together a stream that aggregates all that content. And then you can go to the Memo Lane service and actually... Uh, look up that timeline and see a timeline all the way across of uh, everything from the beginning of of time as far as that memo lane is referencing all the way to today's date. So if you just want to see a quick snapshot, it shows you you know videos that have been posted. It shows you images. It shows you uh, little tweets. It shows you blog the beginning of a blog entry, and then you just click on any of those and it'll enlarge. It'll pull up the page. Um, so it's kind of a a search tool for the stream as opposed to a search tool for the uh, the web. Um, and it, it makes a really nice kind of a, a, a content curation or content aggregation centralizing tool that gives you a way to quickly search and get the information that you're after. Uh, because we do have that sort of phenomena of, well, if it's on the Facebook, how do I figure out how to get back to that? Now, you know, how do I search that Facebook stream? And this this sort of a tool becomes the answer to that problem. That's good. And the gamification one, that is the talk you're doing in about an hour and a half? Exactly. Yeah, I'm actually just um, I'm interviewing Carl Kopp. Uh, and hmm. Carl Kopp, if you're not familiar with Carl, I, I assume that a lot of people are. He's written quite a bit on gamification. This is the, the notion behind this is fascinating. It's taking game principles and applying those principles to other fields. And Carl has done a huge amount of investigation to taking the principles of games and applying them to e-learning. Uh, and we're seeing more and more of this done in marketing and business and those kind of spaces. We're also seeing it done bits and pieces in e-learning. It's sort of saying, okay, what is it about games that's so addictive, so exciting, so uh, interesting to learners? And can we take just those kernels and apply those kernels to e-learning strategies so that we're not compromising the learning, we're not having to build whole entire games, but we're building systems and architecture that facilitate learning and make learning more exciting and engaging for people and kind of leveraging what we learned from the game space uh, to do more. Um, yeah, one thing that's real interesting, Alan, is uh, last year we bought a, um, a Sony PS3, not so much to play it, even though we have played it. It was really a, kind of a research project to figure out what made that more compelling than, let's say, e-learning. And we tried different things. We tried playing videos, the videos that come on, in other words, the game itself, which has a lot of video and animations and graphics, looks great. And you play it with the sound, it's really kind of an immersive experience. Then turn the sound off, and you find that you lose about 80 to 90% of the experience. Hmm. It's, it's really noticeable how much sound impacts that learning experience, and yet, in e-learning today, we still don't use sound anywhere near as much as we could. Hmm. Um, just, just kind of a, an aside. That's absolutely true, and it's so strongly reinforced by the research. Both the, if you look at the research in terms of uh, the kind of dominant psychology theory of e-learning stuff, it all says that the audio reinforcement is important. But even look at media research, and they'll tell you that the, the audio element 
of whatever the production is is significantly important. Mm -hmm. And it's there are research studies that say the quality of the audio will have a greater impact on the perceived quality of the product than the quality of the video or yeah. of the visual elements. It, it's so really true. Mm -hmm. we, we will tolerate some really terrible quality visuals, but we have a very low tolerance for problems in the audio. Yeah, and I, right. I think that's exactly right, that, that we really uh, need to kind of, as much as possible, appreciate how very, very important the quality of the audio experience is for, yeah. the, for the learner. Yep. And, and, and you speaking know, of quality audio, uh, Rick, Jeff suggests that your audio, your mic gain sounds a bit low right now. Actually, maybe I'm sense. not low. Maybe that's better. I just upped it. All right. Thank you. I just gave a presentation yesterday of some you know, new training I created, and the sound tanked. It was way low. And oh, no. What a, gr what a great example of it just completely going wrong is when the sound is not the way it should be. I know. It's fun, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and I love your Aliva example. Aliva says it the... takes time to add good sound. It sure does. It sure does. That, if that, that needs to be part of the project. If sound is going to be a priority, then that's an expense, and that is time. And the question is, do we value it? And I believe with, I agree with, all, with everyone here. Yeah. yeah. And we valuable. do have another, uh, another link. This is to your article on cognitive e-learning. Very interesting yes. subject. Yeah, this is actually, it's a set of 10 uh, e-seminars, and they've become really hugely popular really quickly. So a lot of people are watching these, um, and what we're really seeing here is uh, 10 sessions that correlate to uh, Clark and Meyer's text, E-Learning in the Psychology of Instruction. So I know a lot of people uh, like and use E-Learning in the Psychology of Instruction as their sort of baseline text to understand where... Um, uh, where to kind of get started in the e-learning space and how multimedia e-learning works. And what I did is I did a series of 10 one-hour e-seminars mm -hmm. where I followed along that basic content stream and said, okay, well, this is, um, this is the, uh, the kind of core. This is, uh, uh, the, um, uh, these are the central ideas. Uh, the first one is actually uh, an overview that explains all of the, the core concepts uh, that are behind e-learning and the psychology of instruction. And then the following nine kind of treat each of the primary concepts that are discussed throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the, the text. Uh, and uh, I give examples. I show examples of how to create the content in uh, Shockwave I show, or in uh, Captivate. And I also uh, show examples of uh, how to... Uh, uh, how to... Uh, uh, work with the content. Uh, I show examples of content that's effective and ineffective uh, from the web and from around the world. So lots of, of good kind of uh, bread and butter kind of stuff in that series. People seem to really get a lot out of it. So I've, I've heard a lot of positive uh, responses to it. And then lately I've been working on a new series which is uh, all about uh, uh, composition and layout, about graphics for e-learning. So I've been doing a whole bunch of these things that, that deal with everything from basics of composition and layout and fundamental principles to uh, more specific details of how to make your interface in Photoshop or how to work with Flash for a certain kind of thing, um, how to work with the tools, that kind of stuff. So it's a more pragmatic, practical piece. So we'll get that consolidated series. Once we're done with the series, we'll get one of those pages up on the Captivate blog for that too so people can kind of go through. The, the vision of it is, you know, how can you... Uh, can we provide some materials that are maybe not how to use Captivate, but uh, broader, you know, like um, what are the kind of fundamental principles in e-learning if you're just getting started? See, yes, I, a, I'm, a I've written that, that down. I want to check it out. But th that, those 10 one-hour sessions, is that available for, for anyone mm -hmm. or is that a series that you would purchase? No, they're all for free. So we, have, we actually Whoa. have over 100 uh, free e-seminars now through... Uh, the Adobe uh, eSeminar series. We give these every Wednesday. In fact, that's what we were just talking about with Carl Kopp. Mm -hmm. He'll be doing one. Um, we've been doing a lot of them on our on our own, and now we've started to say, you know what? 
there are huge valuable resources in the community. Uh, we had done one with uh, Kathy Moore not too long ago, and it was an incredibly uh, a wonderful experience and success. And we started to talk to people, and uh, I think we've got one uh, coming up we're planning to do with Cami Bean, and uh, we've got uh, Connie Malamed on deck for one. And uh, so we've got a bunch of people uh, that are lined up to do these things going on into the future and I think they're just wonderful people and they've got exciting ideas and it's a great opportunity to kind of you know hear from a given person in their own special field within e-learning and you know why shouldn't we take that megaphone that Adobe has and use that to promote what's happening in the e-learning space in the industry I think we have an obligation uh, because we're invested in this community and in this uh, solution space we have an obligation to be uh, responsible leaders and bring the voices of the, the folks who are in the space to the people as much as we possibly can. So I think it's important. Love it. That was good wisdom, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> I was wondering. Oh, that's I a wisdom that. gone. That's okay. the wisdom gone. <laughs> okay. He has spoken. Dr. Allen has spoken. <laughs> And and this is a guy who works 150 hours a week and still manages to put on a shirt and tie for the show. I I'm just beyond <laughs> impressed today. Anyway, yeah, I wrote and, um, I wrote in the blog a stream or our chat stream from interviewee to interviewer in a single bound. That's like right. <laughs> that's right. Hey, Alan, where are you going to be in the near future? What kind of shows are you attending? Uh, I'm actually. Uh... Uh, two weeks I'm at uh, GDC at the Game Developers Conference in uh, San Francisco, which is always great fun. Uh, and then uh, I'm at, in Orlando at uh, the eLearning Guild in, uh, uh, in late March. And then in May, I'm at ASTD ICE. And uh, there in ASTD ICE, they'll uh, be letting me get up on stage for one of my crazy presentations uh, where I'll be doing uh, a presentation all about... Uh, low-cost avatar development. So oh, that great. should be a lot of fun. That should I'll be, be talking interesting. About, uh, <laughs> how you can create avatars for your e-learning and do personalization for no or low cost, you know, because <laughs> we've already established I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing you do also on the side is you're a painter. And I know some of the people in the pre-show got to see some of your paintings. And I'm going to show one of them right now. You could tell a little bit of story on this one. Sure. Well, this is, yeah, this is a painting of uh, my mother in the center and my great-grandmother on the right and my grandmother on the left. And it's, it's a pretty interesting piece. The, um, I found some old 8mm uh, film uh, and decided that I really like this moment, which is a, a moment when uh, we were all as a family. I was about uh, three or four years old here. Uh, we were all at uh, Mount Rushmore. And I think the, the image is particularly fascinating if you understand the context. My, my mother was actually abandoned by her mother as a, uh, as a small girl. Uh, so uh, her mother had some troubles. And, and uh, we, we joke in the family, though I, I think it's probably not true, but it might be true. We joke that my grandmother, uh, who's on the left, was a prostitute in Deadwood, South Dakota. And... Uh, that, you know, there's, there are mixed reactions as to how real that is. But uh, my grandfather at the time was uh, stationed overseas uh, in the Air Force. And uh, uh, my grandmother decided to leave my grandfather and left my mom and her brother uh, behind. And she ran off with uh, uh, another man off to uh, Wisconsin or Florida or some such place. This photograph was taken the first time that my grandmother, who's the, the one sort of turned to the side on the left, and my mother were back together uh, mm -hmm. after having been separated for about 18, 16 or 18 years. Uh, and uh, my mother was actually raised by my great-grandmother, who's the woman with her tongue sticking out. So you know the backstory, you kind of understand that there's actually a lot going on between these three women on that day, and you can kind of see it. So I, I really like the image. I think it's really uh, substantial. It sort of gives you a sense of what's probably going on in my mom's mind and, and what's probably going on in all three of their minds all at the same time. So uh, it's kind of a, it's, I suppose it's a sort of a sad story, but it's also a, kind of a fascinating image. And, and that's the kind of thing I like to try to capture and paint. And this is digital uh, painting, correct? Yeah, this is a digital image. So um, I start what does that with. Mean? I, don't uh, I don't understand the process. Thanks for explaining it. 
Yeah, I start with a, I start with an image like the, in this case a cell image. Sometimes I paint it with nothing. I just start with paint with pigment. Sometimes I start with the image sort of as a layer behind, and then I add paint to it. But what I'm doing is I'm using like a Wacom tablet, and the Wacom tablet then you add paint. And the new Photoshop actually lets you add paint and mix it like oils. So mm -hmm. my my painting background, oh. my training is in uh, what's called aquarelle watercolor. And in oil. And the nice thing about this is it lets me layer both in the way that oils layer, but I can also set transparency, which is more the way that like an aquarelle watercolor uh, works. So I can layer paints over the top of each other, but I can also mix paints on the fly. So it was, it, it was at that moment when I realized that Photoshop would let me, because as a painter, you rely on being able to blend the paints mm -hmm. under your brush as your stroke, the the brush across the canvas. Well, yeah. In fact, looking at and this one, look at the uh, the hair on the lion's mane. It look yeah. the, the uh, and we're not zoomed in, but it, I can just see the texture. That that's pretty amazing done digitally. Yeah, it's just well, it's patience. I always tell people it's just patience. It's I, it, you know this is just hours and hours of me brushing in hair. Um, <laughs> so it's not necessarily like the most amazing thing. In the world. It's just that you're. You know, you take the time and you look. And uh, I actually trained as a scene painter originally because my background is my early background is in uh, theater, and so I did a lot of theatrical design and that kind of work. And and I actually learned to paint uh, drops, big uh, paint backdrops, and that sort of thing. So I I kind of think of it as I'm just getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and the and the art of transferring bits and pieces all comes from from that kind of thing. And this is your third painting here. Yeah, this one is um, uh, me as a child in Wyoming. It's not. It's not based on a photograph. This is just a memory. But the the image of the face I used from an image of myself from like a school photo when I was like five, uh, and uh, I just have a memory of sitting in the fields in Wyoming. You know, near the the tumbleweed and the brush and the the kind of colors and the and the the shapes. The landscape there is very uh, kind of flat or rolling hills. And then there, there are also these sort of buttes and bluffs and things, and um, uh, that's kind of where this comes from. It's it's just this memory of what it was like to be a boy out there in the in the fields and the hills and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, guess what? Now we are at the time where we have to make an announcement. Oh, Some, holy cow! Somebody won something. It's true. It's true. Um, in fact, we had three winners of the HTML5 competition uh, yeah. and those three winners. Oh, should we have a do we have a drum roll? No, you know what's funny? I forgot to put the drum roll in. I can do a Can I I'll make one. It's all gone. Okay. We have so a winner. We... The winner is gone or we could do this. Uh, we... Well, how about this one? Oh, I like that one. Oh, I like it. Oh. There we go. <laughs> we have the winner's cowbell. So we should torture and, people. And so the th winner is, or do we have a third runner-up? How are we doing this? We actually have three winners. Three so winners. Three, three people will get iPads. Um, one of the winners is a piece called The Beauty of J&K, uh, which is a beautiful piece uh, that has photography uh, all over India. Uh, the second winner is The Mobile Phone User Guide by Michael Hines. Oh, I forgot to say, by Lesha Sharma is the, the first one. So it's a mm -hmm. uh, Beauty of J&K, A Paradise on Earth by, uh, I think this is Aisha Sharma. It might be Aisha or it might be Lesha, I'm not sure. Um, the second one is Mobile Phone User Guide by Michael Hines. Uh, and uh, that's a gorgeous one as well. And the third one is The Seven Wonders of the World by Ravi Kumar. Uh, and that's based on the number of Facebook likes that they had. Uh, so uh, uh, those are the top three in terms of Facebook likes. And uh, I would say to people, you know, if you found an interest in this competition, stay tuned. Because we are going to keep doing this kind of thing, especially through the Facebook page. They seem to be incredibly, incredibly popular pieces. Uh, and they really seem to be the kind of thing that people are enjoying doing. And we love doing it. I mean, why not give away toys and whatnots and and let people really enjoy and exchange the, their e-learning content. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for us to test and a great opportunity for people to to go out and grab an iPod uh, or an iPad. And we also um, uh, we've been giving away iPads at the shows as well. So if you get out to see us in uh, in Orlando, uh, I expect we'll probably have an iPad there to give away at the booth Yay. as well. And uh, if you're there in Orlando, you stop. may even have an iPad three. You never know. 
We might. I don't know. I, I don't know what's coming. It's coming out about two, uh, two and a half weeks. So hopefully. Really? Oh, so maybe we'll have one. We'll have to, maybe we might have to fight the lines. That's right. To get one. Uh, but we'll certainly try, I'm sure. If, Alan, we, if it's possible, you, we'll try. Any, any other announcements you want to make for Adobe? Anything coming up that's of import? Get people kind of salivating a little bit? Well, uh, I don't know. What do you mean by that question, Rick? You know I'm not allowed to discuss certain things. I know, but we like to pressure people to see if well, they break no, down should... under the pressure. That's right. See if we cave. <laughs> um, I, I should say, um, well, you know, I've, I've talked a little bit about the imports of HTML5, and I hope that, I, that folks have understood that that's really a strong need that we see going forward. Um, Obviously, we're continuing to do a variety of things uh, on all the products. We're working actively on the e-learning products uh, across the board and excited about the work that's going on. I actually just saw the kind of behind-the-scenes work um, in a face-to-face -face meeting. I was in uh, Bangalore a couple of months ago, uh, and the work was jaw-dropping and pretty sensational. Um, uh, so that stuff is, is coming down the pipe and, and looking pretty cool and, and everything on normal schedules. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, other than that, it's it's really cool. You know, we, th uh, we, thought, he, think... we thought he might cave under the pressure because he's got a tie on, kind of you know takes the oxygen out of the head. We said, I hope break on this it's one. It's not working, Rick. It is, it's and I know working. we tried, we tried. Well, the other thing that I should mention is that um, we have a new product on labs.adobe.com, which is called the uh, uh, course course. Oh dear, am I going to be able to do it? Course Companion. Okay. Okay. So, Course Companion for Adobe Captivate. And I would encourage people to check this out. This is not a, a small deal. You know, I mean, we haven't, we haven't thrown it out with huge fanfare because it's a, it's a beta. But this is really unprecedented technology. Uh, this thing actually allows you to go in and see what happened in the course for your learners. And it tracks everything and reports it all in nice spreadsheets with all of the data in the form of analytics. It even makes recommendations to you about what you might change in your course based on what the outcomes are. So for example, let's say you've got a course, you deliver it, you're going to deliver it to 10,000 people. You just drop this little course companion widget inside your Captivate project. That's all you have to do. And then this thing will actually monitor, say, the first 20, 50 users. And immediately, mm -hmm. you'll get real-time results up on the server that show you what were their patterns. What page did wow. they start on? What page did they jump to? What patterns mm -hmm. existed? Is there a heavy band of arcs showing you that they tended to jump from slide 2 to slide 10? Why did that happen? Mm -hmm. And you can start mm -hmm. to analyze the flow that they take through the document. You can analyze the attrition. Uh, you know, Some folks have a course, and uh, they're finding that they have a fall-off rate of 30 40%. Um, wouldn't mm -hmm. it be cool to know if that 30% were all quitting on the same slide, why? Yeah. Why did they quit on that slide? And it tells you that, and it even makes recommendations. You know, if, that, if it sees a pattern like that, it says, well, slide 14 appears to be a high attrition slide. You should examine this slide and see why. It tells you how long yeah. they spent on every slide. It tells you how many interactions they have with every bit of, bit of data. So we're moving in a direction with course analytics where we believe we'll be able to real-time make recommendations back to the author about this seems to be working, this seems to be failing, you might want to consider making an adjustment in your course this way based on what the real-time stats are telling us about how people are interacting. That so we really so think powerful. this is the next generation of what happens in e-learning tools, that we're going to see people have the ability to um, understand and assess what happened in the content, and then in it, from a design chair, use that information and, and produce better courses. And that's uh, at Adobe Labs, and it's called Course Companion? It's called Course Companions. It's available on Adobe Labs now. It's free. Just download it, and you can drop it into your existing Captivate 5.5 products, uh, projects, and it will automatically link into the servers and set you up with your analytics results for that. That is cool. That's very, it's very cool. cool stuff. That sounds great. Well, that's our music. We have come to the end. Alan, as always, a pleasure to see you, whether it's virtually or in person. Always good to see you too, Rick. We have to give you a virtual hug, virtually, but... <laughs> virtually hugging you. Bye. <laughs> Excellent. Bye, G. <laughs> Bye, everyone, and thanks for being in the chat room. And for all those who are watching the recording, please subscribe and give us your feedback and comments. We appreciate it. And to all those who won that HTML5 contest, congratulations. 
Congratulations. We'll see you guys next week. And Alan, have a great one. Thanks for being here. And we'll see you soon, too, on Bye, Learn Chat. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.